If you are considering your first solo backpacking trip but are a little worried, in this video I'll show you how to hike alone, safely and enjoyably. I've been doing solo backpacks for over a dozen years. My first major solo was a thru-hike of Minnesota's border route in 2008 which had a tough start in a burn area. I still do about a third of my hikes solo today. Let's begin by clarifying why you might want to hike alone. In this photo, you can see Mark far behind me. It can be tough finding a partner who can go at the same time as you, is interested in the same destination, you enjoy being with for an extended period, and has a similar hiking pace. Second, some folks just enjoy the peace and quiet and presence of their own thoughts. Third, the challenge of braving the elements and terrain alone can be rewarding. Or perhaps you don't want to be responsible for the risks to other hikers. Conversely, if you get injured while hiking solo, there might be nobody around to help. In this case, George fell and hit his head in the Grand Canyon. Fortunately, I stumbled on him to help patch him up a bit. Another risk is there's nobody to borrow gear, water, or food from, such as in this case where I forgot most of my water bottles for hiking in the Gila. Decision making, including route finding, can be more challenging when you're alone. It always helps to have a second opinion, and maybe some maps that you don't have. Here's a checklist of what we'll cover in depth. Tip number one. Start out with busy routes. Talk to people you meet along the way so they remember you. Select a shorter, easier route and only go if the weather is good. An example of a busy route are the Grand Canyon Corridor Trails where rangers patrol regularly and there's lots of people and mules. Also, try and choose a route that has some cell phone coverage like a mountainside. Tip number two. Pack extra food in case you get hurt and have to wait to be rescued. I lay my food out in a grid with one column per day so I know that I have enough. Even if you are not going to bear country, bear spray can be used against rabid animals or humans if needed. I often bring a space blanket for emergency warmth, signaling, and even used one as an emergency poncho on my border route hike. A fire starter kit is a good idea if you may need to keep warm for a while and for signaling. A first aid kit can be useful, but don't overdo it. I bring some pain meds and blister care, and that's about it. Tip number three. Bring a satellite SOS system if you are hiking in a very remote or dangerous location. A major benefit is giving peace of mind to loved ones by sending a daily, everything's okay message that will contain your GPS coordinates. It's possible to turn on tracking and upload your position to social media if you want to be tracked in real time. Also, bring redundant paper maps or download them to a Kindle as a backup. Tip number four is a big one. Don't repeat the mistakes of the movie 127 hours. Let people know where and when you are going and returning. You can even email your proposed GPS route or highlight a paper map. Include your transport to and from the trailhead. You are more likely to have car problems than hiking incidents. On that note, here's some hints to make sure you make it to and from the trailhead. Make sure your spare tire is fully inflated and bring a 12-volt tire pump. Pack a jump starter battery. They have become very compact and cheap. This is especially important if you are winter camping. I've had car vandalism problems at remote trailheads, so consider a locking gas cap if your car doesn't already have one. Some emergency gasoline is not a bad idea either. Don't leave anything in your car while hiking. Vandals will break in for the silliest things. These suggestions are as much for your peace of mind as anything. Tip number five. Don't forget anything because you won't have anyone to borrow from. I made a rookie mistake and I left two water bottles at home. Make a checklist of things to bring and check them off as you pack. Pack your car the night before you leave so you don't rush and can sleep on it. Double check levels of supplies like liquids. Tip number six. Don't fall. Use trekking poles and quit hiking before you get overtired. 
Falls happen when you are fatigued and not concentrating. Take hourly breaks and check your map to keep track of where you are. Be aware of your body and gear. Mentally check your thirst, blood sugar, sweat, or chill level, and monitor any hot spots on your feet before they turn to blisters. Tip number seven, bring evening entertainment. Kindle books, music, don't forget your earbuds, podcasts, a star chart app for checking out constellations, and maybe some music making. I like to bring my Native American flute. It's lightweight, compact, and sturdy. Last but not least, do keep in mind that it is normal and healthy to be a little afraid of your first few solo hikes. Thanks for watching! If this video was useful, please click like or the subscribe button below.